What's going on YouTube? It's your homeboy Quetzalcoatl hitting you up with another video. Today we're going to talk about the triple header that we had on Saturday that was on Showtime. First bout was at Eddie's Landy Lara versus Freddy Hernandez. Uh, you know, you've seen Lara before, you know, when he beat Paul Williams and he got robbed. Uh, he fought a couple months ago and looked really good. Uh, he pretty much dominated this fight. You know, I had this route, this fight uh, eight rounds to two in favor of uh, Eddie Slamy Lara. Uh, one thing that I really like about Lara is that uh, he's able to maintain his distance uh, from his opponent. You know, in pretty much uh, the fights that I've seen him in. Um, anytime anybody tries to get close, I mean, he hits people with combinations. And he, he, he doesn't have, like, a, you know, a one-punch knockout power or anything like that. But, I mean, he has respectable power in both hands to uh, keep his opponent at bay at all times. Uh, he's got great footwork. He's got really up, uh, good upper body movement uh, for defense. Uh, at times, he's he's too defensive, and I think that's why, uh, you know, some people might try to knock him for that. But, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a great fighter, and uh, he won easy today. Uh, as far as his future, I would really, really like to see him uh, fight uh, Canelo Alvarez for the uh, September 15th fight. But... Um, as far as Golden Boy is concerned, from from uh, from them as a as a business aspect, I think that fighting uh, Eddie's Ed Landy Lara is a really bad fight for Canelo Alvarez on September fifteenth because uh, this guy has the tools and he has the talent to beat Canelo uh, in September. Uh, of course, uh, Canelo is uh, only twenty one years old. He's a relatively <laughs> very young fighter. Uh, he still has a lot to grow and stuff like that. I do think that he's a bit overhyped right now, the way that uh, a lot of, like, Mexicanos see him. Uh, you know, they pretty much see him like he's a legend already, and that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? But he can he can become a very great fighter, but you have to watch out who you put him up against because uh, you don't want him to end up like uh, Fernando Vargas, which was somebody who could have been a, a far better fighter than he was, but uh, he got put in with Tino Trinidad, and Tino Trinidad uh, chewed his ass up. You know, but uh, uh, as far as uh, Canelo Alvarez is, is concerned, I don't think that uh, Eric Landy Lara is the the right fight for him right now. But, I mean, if, if Golden Boy believes in the hype of Canelo Alvarez, then, then put him in there with him. You know what I'm saying? Um, the second fight that we had was uh, uh, Gary Russell Jr. versus uh, Christopher Cruz. And uh, Gary Russell Jr. is, of course, a prospect that's fighting at the featherweight division. Uh, again, a guy who has uh, he has a de decent power. He's got very quick hands, uh, and he's got good movement. Uh, he's a very exciting fighter to watch. Uh, Christopher Cruz is a relatively unknown fighter. I think I've seen him one time on solo book sale or at Steka Boxing. I can't remember, but other than that, I mean, he's uh, pretty much unknown. Uh, Gary Russell uh, went in there and just uh, mopped the floor with his ass and... Uh, Knocked him out in the third round. He knocked him down uh, once in the second round and then uh, three times again in the third round. Uh, I mean, Gary Russell, I mean, he's he's he's, he's another fighter that I'd like to see him uh, fighting a title fight for his next fight. Uh, Gamboa, of course, uh, ended up uh, canceling his fight with uh, with Rios because he, uh, he signed with uh, Mayweather Promotions. If he stays at featherweight... I don't think that that would be the the, the best fight for uh, Gary Russell to to go in as his first championship fight. I think that he should fight another title holder at, at 126 and then possibly uh, have a couple defenses and then fight Gambo at 126. But I mean, he definitely has the talent. But again, you you know you have to uh, push these fighters forward at a, at a at a certain level. You just can't push them up there. But at the same time, you can't be like Julio Cesar. Chavez Jr. and just have nothing but fucking tomato pans your whole career. You know, it just has to be the right push. You know, it's got to be perfect. And, then, you know, that's that's one thing that, that's hard to figure out a lot of times with great fighters. And that's why, you, you know, at times you have things that happen to, like, what I just mentioned with Fernando Vargas. The, um, the main event was uh, K-9 Bundridge versus uh, Corey Spinks. This was, of course, a rematch. From the last fight they, they had where uh, K-9 Bundridge uh, stopped Corey Spinks. Uh, Corey Spinks has, had had a lot of inactivity during this time, and uh, he believed that he was going to be able to come in and uh, win his title back that he's done. I believe he's a, a, a two-time champion. You know, he was able to come back versus uh, uh, Zab Judah and win his championship back, and uh, I believe he, he, you know, he thought he was going to be able to do the same this time. Um, but he was wrong. <laughs> 
you know, out of the bat, you know, K-9 Budridge went ahead and knocked him down in the first round. Uh, K-9 Budridge made it an ugly fight. Uh, K-9 Budridge isn't a, a technical fighter. You know, he isn't, uh, he doesn't have, you know, the defensive skills of Floyd Mayweather or, you know, the speed of somebody like Roy Jones Jr. in his prime, you know. He doesn't have that. He, he has a strong punch. And he goes in there and he just brawls with you. You know, he forces you into an ugly fight. And Corey Spinks wasn't able to to handle that kind of aggressiveness. You know, he was very uncomfortable. You know, anytime, you know, they, they would be in there, like, holding, you know, they'd be, like, grappling. And canine is, like, throwing punches, you know, left and right. And Corey Spinks is still trying to hold and he's getting caught with punches. And you could just see it in his body language. He, he didn't like the way the fight, the, the pace of the fight and the way it was going. And uh, in the seventh round, uh, man, he got caught with a <laughs> a hell of a right hand, and you know his ass got knocked down. And he tried to get up, and you know he you know he showed the ref that he was okay, but you know all he did was try to he was just trying to survive that whole round. And K9 came and knocked his ass down again. And I, I thought the fight was going to be stopped at that point, but the referee gave Corey Spinks an opportunity, you know, to try to you know make a comeback or something. And uh, he got up, and I thought he was going to be able to uh, to to make it uh, pass the round because uh, he was able to hold on and he was trying to move around and stuff like that. But K9 was still ca catching him with a couple punches. Uh, K9 caught him with uh, two low blows, and Corey Spinks tried to uh, complain to the referee. And at that time, uh, K9 just kept throwing, and he, and he caught him with a, a couple of good right hands, and that knocked Corey Spinks uh, towards the towards the corner. And uh, K9 Bundes just started chasing him. And uh, as he ran to the other corner, uh, Corey Spinks looked like he just gave out. He just took a knee, and they pretty much stopped the fight at that point. Uh, Corey Spinks, in the interview, he said that uh, his future has uh, more fights ahead of him, that this wasn't a, a, a good fight for him, that it just wasn't his night. You know, I think that it was good. You know, he didn't have any excuses or anything like that. Uh, I would like to see him in another big fight, but, I mean, he's really got a... Uh, I mean, go back and start from the drawing board because I mean, this 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 was not a good uh, a good win for him. You know, this was a horrible loss, and you know, I just wish it, uh, nothing but the best for him. But hey, man, uh, I hope you come back, man. But it, it was a bad loss. Uh, as far as K9 is concerned, you know, uh, K9 went ahead and called out Canelo Alvarez, uh, like we were talking about before with fighting uh, Erslandi Lara. I think uh, promotional wise, as far as uh, from a business standpoint, like as far as Oscar de la Hoya is thinking, I think. K9 Bunders is probably the better option out of those two to put uh, Canelo Alvarez with because, uh, you know, Canelo uh, uh, Bundridge is, is going to make it an ugly fight with Canelo. And uh, the power that Bundridge has, he may give Canelo some problems, but if Canelo can stay disciplined and, and box the whole time, he'll be able to outbox Bundridge. But Eris Lara has, the, again, he has. Very good boxing skills. He's got great footwork, speed, uh, upper body movement. He can give Canelo a lot of problems and and can beat Canelo. He's a legitimate contender to beat Canelo. You know, I think that the best option would probably to fight uh, K9 Bundridge. And you know, even then, you know, K9 Bundridge does have the power to uh, to to stop Canelo, to give him problems, to make it a dirty fight. You know, you, you don't know how Canelo will react to that. But uh, nonetheless. Uh, Great fight for K9 Bundridge. Uh, I'm pretty sure that a lot of casual boxing fans would want to see him again. If uh, this is the first time they've seen him, you know, he puts on good fights. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I'm going to hit you with some more videos. Thanks for watching. Hit the motherfucking subscribe button and the like button and this shit so we can keep doing it. And this is Quetzalcoatl signing out.